welcome back to my channel. My name is Ayelet. I share about Montessori, respectful parenting, our life, uh, motherhood in general on this channel. And so thank you so much for joining. I have two children. I have a two and a half, almost three year old and a just turned one year old. So that's what we share about in here. And today I wanted to share a bit about our Montessori shelf. So I wanted to share how we arrange it, what's sort of on our shelf right now, but just a little bit about my thinking behind it. Since I said, as I said, I have two kids. Um, so I have my daughter who just turned one and then my son who is nearing three. So I wanted to share a bit about, you know, how we make the shelf work for both of them at a time when my daughter is really mobile, um, but they both also have toys that we want them to have access to. So I'm gonna give a little bit of a tour um, of everything behind me and just what that looks like. We, I have both kids home with me all day. I do a sort of little homeschool-esque thing with my son, who again, he'll be three in March. Um, what that means is we do a Montessori work cycle in the morning, and I think I'm gonna do a video that just goes through what our work cycle actually looks like at some point. But we do a work cycle in the morning, and so that lasts a few hours, generally probably about two hours um, while my daughter naps. So during that time, we have a pretty solid work cycle, but we also come back to the playroom um, throughout the day, and we definitely use these materials at other times as well. That's just sort of a little bit about what we do, is we have that sort of set work cycle in the morning, and then um, we come back other times. And my daughter, again, she also plays in here a lot. Um, she just turned one, and so we have um, toys set for both of them. So without anything else, I'm just gonna get in and show you a bit of how we arrange a shelf, what's on the shelf right now, and some of the things I've done to make it work for both of them. Okay, I'm going to start with a quick just look around the shelf. So here you see we have these three shelves. Um, over here is the music shelf. And then these ones have the Montessori materials on them. So generally there's some certain arrangements. For example, often shelves are done with like language on one shelf, sensorial on the other, or something like that. We do some of that, but not definitely not completely. So we have a bit of a mix, um, though all of us on top is all language work. Um, but we mix up things a bit more just so that they work for our family and the safety of our younger child. <laughs> There's also generally an arrangement from least challenging on the top left to most challenging on the bottom right. Honestly, we do a bit of the opposite just because the more challenging materials tend to have smaller pieces. So we kind of flip it, uh, which just works for us for the safety of our younger child. I will say that's definitely not exact and we do have a mix up of challenge of materials just making sure that those smaller pieces are up higher to keep it safe for our younger child and just what works for our space as well and as you can see up here these are all materials for my son who again is going to be three in march and then down here we have under this shelf these are some baby materials and then one of his stackers and again more baby materials so everything down on this lower shelf on here as well on the music shelf is all safe and great for my baby's use um, so over here and then those are all safe and up here we again these are things that while not designed for her by any means are going to be safe if she gets into them and then up here I have some things that are not so safe for her so you can see small pieces and these she cannot reach. And we make sure that we are very careful. You know, here's some, this is a beading material. I'm gonna get into all that, but this is a beading material, which we definitely would not want her to have access to. So we keep up on the top shelf, we keep some of those things that are either breakable in some cases, not currently, but sometimes breakable, and things that are choking hazards, worrisome from that perspective. And we only have her in here supervised but still obviously want to keep her away from those things. So a bit about, I'm gonna start from the top and talk about what we have on the shelf. So again, this is my son's stuff, um, which I've said a lot. Okay, so this is a simple, this is a material that is sound. This is um, sound game material. So we have sandpaper letters. These are classic Montessori, um, classic Montessori material that are used for teaching letters. And so the idea of sand, sandpaper letters is there is a tactile element to them. And so that gives wonderful tactile feedback in learning those letters. So you would generally trace the letters. My son is not so interested in that at this point. So he generally won't trace them. He does occasionally, but I trace them when we do this just to model that. So right now we have A, T, and M. 
they do letter names and letter sounds. And this is a sound sort. So we have monkey, we have moose, turtle, alligator, apple. And then these are trees like maple tree, tulip tree, things like that. And so he knows the trees and then he's able to sort those. Um, so that's a quick, that's a neat letter sort. I brought this out very recently because he was getting interested in those first sounds, uh, initial sounds. So I brought that out for that and connecting those initial sounds to the letters he knows. So that's where, why I brought that out. Um, and that again is a recent material. This is a material I created. We have been learning about trees and this is a matching. So this, he matches you know, the leaves to the actual tree. You can see here a fir tree and he'll match that with the fir, ne with the fir needles and all of these match. It's quite challenging in my opinion, but he does, he does very well and he has enjoyed learning um, the names as well as sort of the characteristics of the tree. But we've been learning the names through that and he really knows the names of all those trees now. So this is another material I created for him. This is compound words. So for example, this is mailbox. And here you see box. So then in here somewhere is mail. And so these connect together to make the compound word. So you're gonna have starfish. And there's a picture of a starfish in there as well. This is for cowboy. Um, so that's the mail. So if we're doing this one, he would go with that. He would go, there's a the mailbox and he would go mailbox. And so that makes a compound word. And that's just a great way for him to practice breaking down words and just awareness of how words work and playing with words, which is a really great pre-reading skill. He loves these and is very confident with them and those have been really fun. And one more material I also made. This is a what's different material. So they have different characteristics. So here, um, this is obviously all three construction vehicles and this is a dog, which is obviously different. And so, so he finds which one is different and then puts a clip on because that is a good practice for um, fine motor work as well, working on that grasp. So then over here, moving on again, this is a 10 frame. So this is a 10 frame. Um, as you can see, it has 10 holes and these, we have little mushrooms that go in them. And the idea here is he has the number. Um, I made these little cards. So he has the number and it has you know seven dots and it's showing him what to create on the 10 frame. So we just introduced a 10 frame. He has been incredibly interested in counting recently. So we just introduced a 10 frame and this has been a really good way of introducing it for us because it connects the letter to the quantity, or sorry, the number to the quantity. And he's able to then match the pattern is down here, the seven, and he counts them on, on the card and then he counts them again as he puts them in. So that's just a counting material that he really loves uh, that I sort of created and bought a bit. There's this puzzle. My son is really confident with jigsaw puzzles. Um, he'll do like 60 piece whatever puzzles um, or more even, but this puzzle is interestingly quite challenging for him still. And it's just this one he's found a lot more challenging and he can do it confidently now, but I brought it out a few days ago and he was, you know, it took him a little bit, which was interesting because it's just a little different than jigsaw puzzles and he really enjoys that. This is also a bit different. This is like a 3D sort of puzzle. Um, it's He likes that a lot. Now I'm gonna be totally honest here. I wanted to take this off the shelf. He is really good at it. It's incredibly easy for him. Um, I don't really feel like he's you know, necessarily gaining a whole lot from doing it now, especially because he still, even though it's really easy for him, is wanting me to do it with him at all times, which is interesting and generally not the case when he's really, or I mean, he always wants me around. But he'll often do something with me around. Um, he'll do something on his own as long as I'm right there. Um, if it's at a good level for him, but here he just has been wanting me to do it with him, which is interesting because it's very easy for him. So I did want to put it away um, in our last rotation, which was a couple days ago. He was not so into that, and he really want he like has been really still going for it and want to get out. So I left it out, and that's just you know something to keep in mind um, if your child is still really engaged in something even if it doesn't feel like, you know, I don't know. I think if 
I always leave something out if he is still really into it and really goes to it each day, no matter what. This puzzle is awesome. So it is a layers puzzle. So we have spring on top, then it's gonna be summer. And under summer is um, then fall and then winter. So that's a really cool puzzle, but it's layers. So it's a bit more challenging and he really, really enjoys this one. Highly recommend that puzzle. And then we have a threading material. This is um, a more challenging threading than we've just done in the past. And he's loving working on that. Very much a fine motor challenge. Okay, moving down. Um, I created this. This is emotions matching for these love every peg people. So it's, we use this to talk about emotions. Um, he can match them easily, but we like to use that to talk about emotions and just open up conversations. These are dressing frames, um, we have different ones. So I've had dressing frames up for a while now, but there are different challenges. He started with the, these three on the bottom. Then I introduced these two and he can do both of these now. He loves the buckle the most. That's his absolute favorite. He does that all the time. Um, these are number matching. So one goes to that. Um, that's just a good material for him practicing um, the symbol to the quantity. These are rhyming puzzles. Now I brought these out because rhyming is a really important pre-reading skill and I were working on it a lot and I am going to be completely honest. I have no idea whether he seems to actually understand these because he's very visually able to do puzzles. <laughs> he's able to do puzzles visually very well. So he does this puzzle quite well, but I'm not convinced that he actually is getting the matches of rhyming. So I still, I like to say it with him and help him sort of hear them and go together um, through that with him. And I might do some more rhyming activities soon that are not puzzles, just to make sure we're working on that um, without him just putting the pieces together because he's very good at puzzles. So the last of my son's materials, this is a stacker. Um, this one is also pretty easy for him at this point. And actually I'm probably going to pull this one off this week at some point because um, he doesn't go for it as much anymore. It's more challenging than it looks. You have to... They all move differently. See, this one doesn't move, so you have to go there, there, there. Okay, so this is a little bit of a more challenging puzzle. I leave it on stacked because starting, if it's taking it off, is a challenge, quite a challenge as well. Um, so that's a great puzzle, but a great, yeah, stacker puzzle, but I am going to be taking that off soon just because he doesn't go for it as much anymore. So this one I have on this lower shelf. So my daughter used to have just the shelf down here. And now that she's bigger and she's really wanting to stand and go for a higher shelf, I made this part of her shelf as well. So other than this one, which again is my son's. So I have here, these shelves are two different levels. So the higher one is my son's. She can get to that but doesn't go for it as much. This is one she goes towards. Whereas here up top, she cannot get to, and we will reassess all of the choking hazards when she can. So down here, um, so this is hers. This is a carrot posting. Love this activity. I brought this out and yesterday, the day before. She's loving it. My son's also loving it and counting the carrots um, as he does it, but he used to love this. It also when he was about a year, um, so that's a favorite here great material and then she has the stacker and that's probably pretty obvious how that works and then here is a hammer toy and she enjoys this one as does my son and it's just a great hammering activity and it's sort of an object permanence box inside as well mirror puzzle we love those super fun then over here she has a first level of her, of uh, this stack of this um, shape sorter. Oh, there's something on in there. Um, first level of the shape sorter. And so that is the cylinder, drops in. She takes it back out. She can very easily do that one. I tried to introduce her to the next one up and she wasn't interested. She prefers the cylinder for now. So I brought this one back and I'm keeping it like this for now. This is a pincer grasp puzzle. Um, just works on pincer grasp, it's 3D. And it, we had the egg in a cup a few months ago, and this is sort of the next level up from that. This is an object, um, a more advanced object permanence box. She mastered the object permanence box a while ago. And now this one, it slides the ball. Okay, 
So that I think is basically all of her materials over here. So my son has obviously quite a few more materials than my daughter does. Um, that just makes sense with age. I try to keep hers fairly limited. So she has one, two, three, four, seven toys out. Oh, eight, because she also has this ball run over here and she loves that. This ball run is probably actually her current favorite toy. Such a fun one. Um, she loves that. Um, so that's everything. And then on the music shelf, I'll just quickly go over that. Um, we have these bells. We have um, this flute, maracas slash um, rattles, an accordion, a rainbow drum, and a drum. She loves, loves it. My daughter loves the drum. My son loves all of these. Um, and we kind of, we don't rotate the music shelf much. We pretty much keep that solid. Whereas these shelves, I rotate a lot more. So I realized this is another actual like zone in our Montessori playroom that I really should show because even though it's not like shelf work per se, it does have a lot of shelf work type activities. So it's very relevant. This is our art station. I did not clean it up prior to this. It's a bit messy. This is a hole punch, which is a great um, fine motor work. It takes some pressure pushing down. It's just a really good activity for toddlers. I'd say from around two and a half possibly. Um, so this one is a maple leaf, so it's a tree. Um, so we were doing tr a tree unit prior to this. So that's what that is. Um, so that's there. And then up here, if this is pencil sharpening. So I don't do pencils right now. I do these little crayons, which he peels and then sharpens. And these come from just, you know, free at a restaurant. So that's been a really good use of them. Practices pencil sharpening with that. It's a great fine motor activity and practical life work as well. Here he has scissors. Um, this is for cutting, and he just really uses like little scraps of paper most of the time. Sometimes we'll like get a newspaper, and he'll ask to cut that as well. Or I occasionally do cutting strips for him to work on. So those will be allowing him to cut on that. Um, and these things have been brought out in the last several months, and they've sort of stayed here for a bit. So this is not. These are not rotated a ton, but they are based on what I think he is interested in. So the hole punching, the pencil sharpening, and the scissors. Um, with cutting strips. So I just, you know, I basically just whenever we have little bits of something from my eye cut, I leave that for him to cut. And there are other things we can do that, as I said, I bring out sometimes, like cutting strips, things like that. Otherwise, though, it's just open ended art materials. And these are all materials he has access to. And yeah, so basically just open ended. And these are not rotated really at all. So that's everything in the playroom. I do wanna mention though, that we do also have open-ended toys. So this is our living room. We have blocks here, these like Lego Duplo type things, lots of magnetic tiles. We love magnetic tiles. In my son's room, he has um, he has cars and things, like a lot of cars and trains. And then here we also have a, oh, this is like a little like, cash register set along with a key set and then some gross motor toys here. So we have um, these sensory squares and these stackers and a balance beam and a tunnel with a climber and the pickler, and this is in our living room. So we still do have a, all of those sorts of gross motor toys, or sorry, all of those open-ended toys as well, um, but I was mostly showing a tour of what we have in the playroom. So the playroom or homeschool room, whatever. So my goal of this video was to show what we have in the playroom, the homeschool room, um, whatever you want to call it. So I didn't show a ton of those open-ended toys. I just wanted you to know we do have them as well. Um, but I hope that was helpful in sort of giving an idea of how we arrange a shelf. So, I mean, the basic thing of that is I put choking hazards up higher and my son's stuff up higher and my daughter's stuff down below. But gives a little look at how we divide it and how we organize that. Um, so thank you so much for joining and come back for more about Montessori at home, respectful parenting, all sorts of things like that. So thank you so much for joining and have a good day.